Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of, College of Ireland and in this video, a uh, video dealing with multiple linear regression. It's not actually going to be a short video, there's a lot involved here. Uh, we're going to try to estimate the coefficients for a multiple linear regression model. Uh, but in this case, not the simple linear regression model when we have one independent variable, when we actually have two independent variables. And maybe just to motivate this, uh, I have something that I have actually already done through, through Excel, to the Excel Data Analysis Tool Pack, uh, where I have a dependent variable Y, and I have two independent variables X1 and X2. And I have a set of observations, I have five observations across those independent variables. And what I'd like to actually find is the line of best fit, actually, or the plane of best fit that actually goes through that, that, goes through that data set. Really what we're trying to estimate is we're trying to estimate these particular coefficients here that Excel has already done for us. So to do that, uh, well, let's just look at the line. The line of best fit that we're trying to estimate is is y is equal to b0 plus b1 times the x1 variable uh, plus b2 times the x2 variable. So we really want to estimate b0, b1, and b2. Once we have that, we actually have our plane, okay, which is the, the relationship between the independents and the dependent variables. So let me just actually rewrite this data down here because we're going to have there's a lot of calculations involved, uh, and I'm actually just going to round the y values to one whole number. So we're actually going to be estimating these values here. Uh, so we'll hopefully we'll be close enough where calculations by hand. So the y values, so we're going to have our y values, uh, our, and then we're going to have our x1 values and our x2 values. Uh, so we have minus 3.7, uh, we have 3.5, we have uh, 2.5, we have 11, 11.5, and we have 5.7. Okay, and then we have 3, 4, five, six, and two, and then we have eight, five, seven, three, and one, okay? That's our set of data. Let me just actually just get a ruler here because I'm gonna try to keep this as neat as, neat and, as, neat as possible. Uh, so let me just actually just do a line across here, okay? So that's our data, okay? Uh, let me just try to keep everything in line here, okay? So that's our data, and what I'll do is I'll just put a, a double bar down here, Right, just to keep these values separated. Okay, so there you go. So there's our data, and what we'd like to do is we'd like to calculate B0, B1, and B2. Now, there's a lot of formulas involved in this, okay? So what I'm going to do is, like, I'm just actually going to give you the formulas, yeah, okay? Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to run it, yeah? I will do another video on how we, in relation to how we can actually calculate these formulas and derive them, okay? Uh, so the B0 value, uh, the B0 value, B0 is equal to the average of the y's minus the B1 value times the average of the x1 variable minus the B2 values times the average of the x2 variable. So to actually calculate the intercept, we need to have we need to have the B1 coefficients and the B2 coefficients uh, calculated. So we really need to know what's the formula for the B1 and the B2 coefficients. So for B1. Okay, the formula looks something like this. It's a bit complicated now, but let's just bear with it. Um, it's the sum of the x2 squared values times the sum of the x1 y values. So there's like a cross product going on here. And uh, minus the sum of the x1 values, x2 values, times the sum of the x2 y values. And that needs to be divided by, okay, it needs to be divided by the sum of the x1 squared values times the sum of the x2 squared values minus the sum of the x1, x2s all to be squared, okay? Uh, the b2 values, well the b2 values we just flip, we flip the, 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 the coefficients, okay? So we're gonna flip the coefficients, so the b2 values uh, is gonna be the sum of the, it's gonna be the sum of the x1 squared values, see the way I flipped the coefficient here? Or, sorry, the indice, yeah, that was representing the variable, uh, times the sum of the x2 y values minus, well that's going to be the same when we flip it, x1 x2 times the sum of the x1 y values. Okay? And that's divided by, this denominator remains the same, it's the sum of the x1 squared values times the sum of the x2 squared values minus the sum of the x1 x2 squared values. Okay, So 
we have to calculate all this but unfortunately this is actually a transformation with these these x's here and these y's aren't actually representing these values here so we've got another small set of formulas that allow us to calculate these summations yeah so what we have is this is that we have we have the, the sum the sum of the x the x i squared values is simply equal to the sum of the x one sorry the x i squared values the main variable that's a big x in this time yeah and uh, minus the sum of the x1 x sorry the xi squared values over n okay so now these variables here okay are dealing with these variables up here okay but it's iterated across how many independent variables we have okay so we've got two independent variables so i will be initially one when i is one uh, this becomes when i is 1, uh, the formula, well, let's just say, write it down, when i is equal to 1, this formula here becomes the sum of the x1 squared values is equal to the sum of the x1 squared values minus the sum of the x1 to be squared values over n. When i is equal to 2, this formula here, maybe I'll just put that formula in red, okay? okay this formula, this formula here, okay? Uh, becomes when i is equal to 2 it becomes well the sum of the x2 squared values is equal to the sum of the x2 variables squared minus the sum of the x2 variable to be squared over over n okay so what we what we're able to do here now with this particular formula here is to calculate this value here this value here this value here this value here, this value here, and this value here. Okay, so we've sort of got nearly a third of the formula, nearly a third of the formula done just with that formula there. Okay, and then we have, let's say, we have the cross product of the independent variables with the dependent variables. So we have a formula that says that the sum of the x i y is uh, is equal to uh, the sum of the variable x i times the y. That's the cross product here of the variable times the y times the dependent variable and uh, minus the sum of the xi times the sum of the sum of the y's okay over n okay so now once again when i is equal to one and i is equal to two when i is equal to one this becomes well the sum of the x one y values are equal to the sum of the x one y values minus the sum of the x ones times the sum of the y's over n okay and then when i is equal to 2, we have this is the sum of the x2 y values is equal to the sum of the x2 y's minus the sum of the x2's times the sum of the y's over, over n. Okay? Once again, this formula here, depending on how many independent variables we have, okay, uh, will be evaluated for each one. So now we have x1 y and we have x2 y. So now we have x1 y. Uh, we have x2y, we have x2y, and we also have x1y. The only thing that we're missing now is this cross product of the of the two independent variables. Okay, uh, and maybe what I'll do is I'll just write that down. Okay, and the cross product of the two independent variables. The final one. Okay, the final one to do to calculate. Okay, the final one to calculate is where we have the sum of the x1, x2s is equal to the sum of the x1 variable times the x2 variable, that's the cross product of the independent variables, okay, minus the sum of the x1 times the sum of the x2 over over n, okay? So we have to do all these calculations, yeah? Um, so let's get started, okay? So you can probably see what we need from a calculation perspective. As I said, we need to calculate, we need to calculate the square of the independent variables. We'll need to do that, okay? We need to calculate the cross product of each independent variable to dependent variable, okay? Uh, and that sort of does all, I think that's all, all, everything that we need. So let's do that. So we need to calculate the square. So we're going to have to calculate x1 squared. We're going to calculate x2 squared. We're going to have to calculate uh, x1 times y, okay? And we're going to have to calculate x2 times times y, okay? So let me do these here. So we have, let's say, I'll just make sure I have my calculator here so that we really, really need precision here, okay? Uh, so the x1 variable squared, well, 3 squared is 9, okay? 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, and 2 squared is 4, okay? Uh, the x2 variable squared, 8 eight, that's 64. Uh, that gives us 5 fives is 25. 
7 squared is 49, 3 squared is 9, and 1 squared is 1. Now the cross product, the x1 variable times the independent variable, so it's 3 times minus 3.7 gives us a value of, well that gives us a value of minus 11.1. Then it's 4 times 3.5, which gives us a value of 14. Then it's 5 times 2.5, which gives us a value of 12.5. And then it's 6 times 11.5, gives us a value of 69. And then it's 2 times 5.7, gives us a value of, in this case we have 11.4. Okay? And then we have the second independent variable times the y value. So the cross product of the second independent variable times the dependent variable. So in this case we have, it's 8 times minus 3.7 gives us a value of uh, minus 29.6 and uh, then it's 5 times 3.5 gives us a value of 17.5 okay and uh, then it's 7 times 2.5 gives us a value of 17.5 as well okay 17.5 and uh, then it's 3 times 11.5 gives us a value of 24.5 Okay. And then finally it's 1 times 5.7 gives us 5.7. I just want to check these two here again. 5 times 3.5 gives us a value of 17.5. And 7 times 2.5 gives us a value also of 17.5. Brilliant. Okay. So now we have all of these done. But what we require is, we actually require um, the summations. The summations of those particular, of those. Everything here on the right hand side of these these particular values are are actually are independent and are dependent variables being calculated. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring them together. This is like sums of squares going on here. Bringing them together to give us these coefficients that feed in, that feed into the parameters. So what we need to do now is we need to sum all of these guys up. Okay? Um, so we need our sigma values. And to look, typically we would write all of our summations underneath here, but I'm just going to do them on the top here. So the sum of the x1 squared values is going to be 9 plus 16 plus 25 plus 36 plus 4 gives us a value of 90. Actually, maybe I'll write that down here. Right? So what I have now is I've just calculated okay, um, the, sum, the sum of the x1 so th this is the sum of the x1 squared values yeah actually let me write that down a little bit differently yeah uh, so ignore that there for a moment let me just get rid of that here so i want to write it down as the sum of the x1 squared values is actually equal to it's equal to 90 brilliant and uh, now this x2 squared values the second independent variable squared uh, is 64 plus 25 plus 49 plus 9 plus 1 gives a value of 148. Actually, let me just check that again. So we have 64 plus 25 plus 49 plus 9 plus 1 gives us 148. So we now we have the sum of the x2 squared values is 148. Okay? Let's do the cross product of the x1 and the y's. Okay? Uh, so we have uh, minus 11.1 plus 14 plus 12.5 plus 69 plus 11.5 gives us a value of 95.8. So now we have the sum of the x1 y values is equal to 95.8. And then finally, let's have a look here. The final one here, this row is the cross product of the second independent variable with the dependent variable. It gives us minus 29.6 plus 17.5 plus 17.5 plus 34.5 plus 5.7 gives us a value of we have the sum of the x2 y values is equal to 45.6 okay what else do we need here well we're going to need other things we're going to need the sum of the x values and uh, the x1 values the sum of the x2 values uh, and we're also going to need the sum of the y values so we need the sum of our independent variables so the sum of the x1s uh, is equal to well, what we got here we have 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 2 gives us a value of 20. We need a sum of the x2 values and what we've got we have 8 plus 5 plus 7 plus 3 plus 1 gives us a value of 24 and finally we need a sum of the y values so the sum of the y values we have minus 3.7 plus 3.5 plus 2.5 plus 11.5 plus 5.7 gives us a value of well the sum of the y's is equal to 19 19.5
okay so we're nearly there now and uh, we've got all of these things now calculated and uh, we need to really what we need to now do is substitute them into our formulas okay so we've calculated all of these uh, I suppose let's say the, the squares and the cross products of the independent variables with the dependent variable and so on and now what we need to do is we need to start plugging them in here so I'm going to do this calculation here which is the sum of the small x1 squareds first of all which is simply equal to this sum here okay so let's have a look at that so we're going to now have uh, so it's the sum of the small x1 squareds is equal to well it's equal to the sum of the force independent squares yeah okay so that is 90 so it's equal to 90 okay minus okay the sum of the force independent variable okay which is 20 to be squared so that's 20 to be squared divided by n how many observations we have and we've got five well how many uh, pairings of observations and we have five sets of observations so that's the first value and uh, the second one is the sum of the x2 squared values uh, is equal to the sum of the x2 the squared of the sum of the squares of the x2 variable okay which is 148 okay 148 minus uh, the sum of the x2 variable which is the sum of the x2 variable which is 24 to be squared that's 24 to be squared over f over five okay let's just do them two calculations okay so now what we have is the first one is we have 90 minus 20 squared which needs to be divided by five gives us a value that comes out a nice handy number there of 10 okay then we have 148 minus we have 24 to be squared divided by five and that gives us a uh, 22 22.22.8 22 there okay brilliant so what we've actually just calculated now is we've calculated this and we've also calculated this thing here okay just continuing on now and uh, let's calculate this the cross product yeah okay of the x1s okay uh, the force independent variable with the dependent variable so now we have the sum of the x1 y's is equal to well what is it it's it's the sum of the cross product of the independent variable the first one with the dependent variable so it's the sum of x1 y which is 95.8 so it's 95.8 okay minus minus the sum of the x ones okay times the sum of the y's okay so the sum of the x ones whoops the sum of the x ones is 20 so it's minus 20 times the sum of the y's which is 19.5 and that needs to be divided by divided by 5 and then the second one when i is equal to 2 okay we have the sum of the x2 y's is equal to the cross product the sum of the x2 variable times the dependent variable so the sum of the x2s which is times the y's which is 45.6 so that's 45.6 minus uh, the sum of the x2s times the sum of the y's so the sum of the x2s is 24 so it's times 24 times 19.5 over 5 which gives us our well nearly there we are uh, so now in this case here let's just do the force we have 95.8 minus 20 times 19.5 divided by 5 gives us a value of 17 17.8 and then here we have this is it's 45.6 minus 24 times 19.5 divided by 5 gives a value of minus 48 so minus 48 nearly there now and then finally what we have so now what we've actually calculated here is we've calculated this and we've calculated calculate this so the final thing to calculate is actually it's actually this guy is actually this guy here okay so now we have the sum the sum of the x1 x2s is equal to the sum of the cross product of the first independent variable with the second independent variable okay well I forgot that here do, 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 cross product. oh I actually didn't do that calculation so let me actually just go back here uh, so we have to actually do uh, the x1s the x ones times the x twos. We haven't done that calculation. Yeah. Well, three eighths is twenty four. Four fives is twenty. Five sevens is thirty five. Uh, six threes is eighteen. And two ones is two. Okay. So let's just sum these up. So we have twenty four plus twenty plus thirty five plus eighteen plus two. Because this is a value of ninety nine. So now we have actually the sum. The sum of the x one x twos is 
is 99 okay so this table always looks like this this table ain't going to change this table is always going to have this particular form here okay uh, which is important to here to keep an eye on yeah so now just continuing on now we have the sum of the x1 x2 is, is the cross product of the x1 x2 variable which is 99 okay minus the sum of the x1s well the sum of the x1s is 20 times the sum of the x2s which is 24 Okay, divided by 5, which gives us a value of, in this case we have, it's 99 minus 20 times 24 divided by 5, gives us a value, gives us a value of 3. Okay, so now we're good to go. So now we have all of these coefficients, okay, so we have all the coefficients, and now what we can do is, we can now calculate, we can now calculate our B0, our B1, and our B2, okay. So what I'm going to do is, we're going to need all of these values here. These are all very important for us, right? So let me just get this sheet here. Okay, these are the 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 fine. This is the f I suppose the final sort of set of values that we're going to that that we actually require. Okay, let me just maybe fold this over here. Okay, so here we go. And now I'm ready to calculate the the b the b values. Okay, so the b one values. Okay, so let's have a look at this here. So we have to calculate the b ones first. So our B1 values are, it's the sum of the small x2 squared values. And there's the sum of the small x2 squared values is 42, 32.8, okay? Times the sum of the small x1 y values. Well, there's the small x1 y values is 17, 17.8. Okay? Minus the sum of the x1 x2s, so the small x1 x2s, okay, which is 3, okay? Times... The sum of the x two y is well. The sum of the x two y is minus is minus forty eight. Okay, and that needs to be divided by. Okay, that needs to be divided by uh, the sum of the sum of the x one squared values. The sum of the x one squared values, which is ten. Okay, times the sum of the x two squared values. Sum of the x two squared values is forty two point eight. Okay. Minus the sum of the x one x twos to be squared. Sum of the x one x twos to be squared, which is three to be squared okay that's the b1 value okay let's actually just do that calculation here okay so now i have b1 is equal to let's just do the numerator 32.8 times 17.8 oh 32.8 times 17.8 gives us a value minus times minus is a plus so plus 3 times 48 it's going to give us a value of that's 727.84 divided by okay now this denominator here is important because it's shared this denominator is shared in the b2 value so i'll just i'll just do this calculation here so this is a 300 10 times that is 328 minus minus 9 gives us a value of 319 so that's 319 so when we do the division here we end up with let's do it we have 727.84 divided by 319 gives us a value of it's approximately 2.28 is our b1 coefficient our b2 coefficient the b2 is the sum of the x1 squareds okay now we've already got the x1 squareds they're in the denominator here they're 10 okay uh, times the sum of the x2 y's well the x2 y's is minus 48 okay and uh, minus the sum of the x1 x2's which is 3 okay times the sum of the x1 y's which is which is 17 Point eight, which all needs to be divided by this common denominator here. Okay, it's common across B1 and B2. Okay, this denominator, which is 10 times 42.8 minus 3 to be squared, which now gives us a B2 value. Okay, uh, we have that's 4, that's minus 480. Okay, minus 3 times 17.8 gives us a value of minus 543.4, which needs to be divided by 319 which gives us a value of let's divide that by 319 which gives us a value of minus 1.67 okay so that's our b1 now so now we have our b1 and our b2 here's our b1 value here here's our b2 value right here and finally we need to calculate our b0 value okay so let's have a look at the b0 so the b0 value our b0 okay is equal to it's the average of the y's okay so it's the average of the y's well the, we know what the average of the y's are as well it, the sum of the y's is 19.5 so the average of the y's is 19.5 over 5 okay minus the b1 value which is 
2.28 times the average of the x1s. Well, the sum of the x1s is 20, so it's times 20 over over 5, minus uh, the b2 value, which is minus which is minus 1.67, okay, times the x2 values, okay, well, the average of the x2 values, and the x2 values, the sum of the x2s is 24, so it's times 24 over over 5, which gives us our b0 value. Getting a bit squashed there, that was, yeah, okay. So let's see what we have. So we have, it's 19.5 divided by 5, gives us that value here. This is going to be negative, so it's minus 2.28 times 20 divided by 5 gives us that value there minus times minus is plus uh, 1.67 times 24 divided by 5 gives us a value of it's 2.796 so we have b0 is equal to 2.796 so the equation of the line now this is our this was our final uh, let's say parameter that was required so the equation of the line don't forget is y is equal to b0 plus b1 times x1 plus b2 times x2 so our line actually becomes y is equal to 2.796 b1 is 2.28 plus 2.28 times our x1 values uh, minus 1.67 times our x2 values and that is the model that we've just estimated okay uh, we could go on now we could calculate residuals and so on but that's our model let's just see how that that fares out against what we actually did earlier on oh there you go the intercept we have previously calculated it with x no, don't forget of rounding and things like that in here uh, i well i rounded the original the original uh, dependent variables you can actually see now the intercept as true xl the data analysis tool pack is 2.79 which is what we have here, okay? Uh, the x1 value is 2.27. Well, look, 2.28 we have, which is this rounded to two decimals. And then finally, the coefficient, the b, the b2 is minus 1.67 here, and it's minus 1.67. So even with the bit of rounding, yeah, we actually got these pretty bang on, yeah? Okay? So look, guys, I do appreciate that there was a lot of work involved in that. Uh, I mean, this video was after taking about 26, 27 minutes there to to, to do. Uh, but once again, uh, I, this was Jonathan Lambert uh, with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope that this video was in some way uh, intuitive. And more importantly, I actually hope that was helpful for you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.